Well, we're going to talk politics and something about Ward 4, right? Uh, Dana Ribeiro has been there for three terms. She has decided to not run this time, as promised. So it's an open seat, and that means there are a lot of people trying to take her spot. Well, she's here to give us her expert commentary tonight. Welcome to the program, Dana Ribeiro. Good to see you, Dana. Thank you, but it's not my spot. It's the people's chair. Ah, yes, that's right. I, so, you're you're absolutely right about that. They're my boss, and they'll be whoever's, you know, the new person is, they'll be their boss, too. Well, I remember the night that you won the first time six years ago, and we had you on at City Hall on our TV program. And I think you even said back then that you believed in limits on terms that you thought, yep. hey, you should do three terms and that should be the end of it. Mm -hmm. And you were sticking with that. Why is it important for you to put a limit on yourself like that? Well, um, I think, you know, I, life is like about many experiences. So uh, I want to grow and learn as a person. And uh, you don't do that if you just keep doing the same thing. At least for me, it doesn't. People have different ways of growing and learning. But for me, it's about exposing myself to different experiences. And one of the things I have learned from being a counselor is what I don't know. Right. So uh, Wednesday, I start graduate school at Tufts University to get a master's in urban planning. And hopefully, that will make me uh, more well-rounded right. in my thought and in my approach. Uh, well, some people might forward. say, some of your supporters might say, well, you know, Dana, we're, we're supporters of you. We, we like you there, you know, and uh, we think you're doing a great job. And you've learned a lot. Eh, why not hang around for a while? I mean, I'll still be involved. I was an activist before I was elected, and I'll still be an activist uh, after. Activist coming from the Latin activar, meaning pain in the ass. Wow. So, <laughs> so I'll just be a big old activist when I'm gone. Pain in the ass student. comes from Latin, is that right? Uh, uh, sort of, mm -hmm. kind of. The new Latin. Uh, yeah, the new Latin. Latin. <laughs> it's like the new math, which I'm learning now in graduate school has no numbers. <laughs> well, let me ask you this: There are a number of people running in Ward Four, and you know, anytime there's an open seat, it makes it a little bit different because you don't have the incumbent going against the challenger and Which defending your record and all that kind Encourages of thing. people. What would you say to the folks that are running for your open seat? Um, well, I've spoken to many of them. Uh, do you I know all I, of them? I do not know all of them, but I've spoken with them, uh, some when they were thinking about, some after they've decided to run, because I do support uh, the idea of new people getting in. And, uh, you know, some of them have some really cool ideas. They all have a love, the ones that I've spoken with, all have a real love for the city, and they're really putting themselves out there and making themselves vulnerable, which should be applauded. Right. So uh, it's exciting. I'm excited for all this new talent. Well, you know, I hate to mention this, but your old rival JoJo, I think, is jumping back. I don't in. like that word. Uh, you know, um, the, you know, the Yankees and the Red Sox—they had a rivalry, right? So, like, didn't Dana and JoJo kind of have a rivalry? No, kind of thing? Not the people really, no. decided that we just wanted the same job. It's <laughs> right, not right. that deep. Um, though he acted pretty badly, uh oh, no, no, uh, no, it's, no. <laughs> it's not that it's not that deep on on my part because right. you know you grow and you learn. Right, if and you're I know, smart. I know there's a, a lot of people running, and it gets gets narrowed down to two. One interesting one is uh, Carney, also the the son of uh, somebody that's on the council. So that's something that's a little bit different. That you would have, a, you know, somebody that's, you know, the son of a council that's already there. That may be a name recognition thing that might be of help. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how, how that works. I think, I mean, within City Hall, there's so much, much uh, incestuousness. Um, what's a little more? <laughs> well, tell me about the mayor's race now. I know that you didn't uh, run for mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, by the way, why didn't you run for mayor? I'm just wondering. I'm about. going to school. I have oh, to, okay, all right. you know, uh, I think a smart person, <laughs> when they realize they have deficits, you try to fill those. Fill those uh, first? Yeah, and all you right. try to do that do it different ways. My, I like to go to school and learn. I'm going to be around some really smart professors that will hopefully mold me. Maybe I'll get a mentor. <laughs> further, further molding. Yes, maybe uh, I'll get a mentor and I'll, I'll uh, be right a better now, person. Right now it looks like Mayor Mitchell is not having the big name competition unless Brian Gomes decides to jump in and I understand that I'm so sick of that out. big name thing. It kind of goes to that thing about electability. Familiar name. I think, right, but familiar, familiar name. Familiarity breeds contempt. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, you know, we should really look at the issues. Like, what do people want? What's missing in the city? Listen to the people that are running, and whoever you think can best provide what is lacking, that's who you vote for. Do you think Mayor Mitchell is beatable this time? I think anybody is. I mean, it, it's how you connect. We have certainly have upsets before. I mean, I, the last presidential, I was... Busted my behind for a woman that I was like, she's got this. This guy could never. 
never get and in. You never know what can happen. And right? you now never know he's walking out of meetings at G7 and the Amazon's on fire. So you right. never know what's going to happen. All right. The future for Dana Ribeiro. I mean, sometimes people, they decide to leave politics and then all of a sudden a couple of years goes by and it's like, oh, oh I definitely want to run for another office. Yeah. But like I said, I've learned uh, what I don't know. And so now it's time for me to become a, a, a better, better at my weaknesses and, um, and then come back stronger. Now, real quick, I know you're from New Bedford, but you did go to New York for a while. And you were and doing. DC. You were I was do- a bison. Right, and you were doing a lot of stuff like we're doing here video stuff and yep, I you worked know, in editing film. and stuff like that in film. So, what was that yeah. like? Um, it was a lot like politics. There's a joke. Uh, <laughs> how do you get. How does. Wait, how many PAs does it take to change a light bulb? One to do it and 24 to say they could have done it better. The exact same thing in politics. Wow. So, it's the same. Um, a little less ego, but it, it's also cool because, <laughs> like with smaller film, it's more of like a feel with theater, and I do love theater. Uh, so you get different people contributing different elements, and that's always cool. And sometimes it's cool if it's like a first time writer director with uh, the first film I worked on, Fresh, Boaz Yakin, to see someone that works so hard and see their dreams accomplished. Right, not easy, not easy for sure. No, so so that's cool. Um, All right, and real quick, uh, as far as uh, the political thing this year, what do you recommend? Do you recommend door-to-door campaigning? People talk about grassroots and all this kind of thing. I always recommend. Well, with Ward, I always recommend that. Um, you can I, hit every single door in the Ward, do you think? I listen. I loved it because I it? did it so often. I was able to eat cake every single day, and I still st- stayed <laughs> like a size zero. Um, but, well, I'm not a zero now. What do you mean eat cake? People would feed you? When no, you when I got home, I was like, oh. I'm hungry. Oh, what I am I having? Okay. Cake. <laughs> because I, I walked for four hours. But um, I do recommend it, especially okay. for people that maybe um, aren't too familiar with the different areas. I mean, people have lives to live. They have to go to school, work, pay bills. So sometimes you're not able to be in the community as much as you'd like to. All right. One more quick thought. Biggest issue facing New Bedford at this point, do you think? Um, I really, for me, it's about uh, the, the uh, sort of controlled level of poverty that we have and uh, working class people, how we can shift them out of that position to be homeowners, to achieve their American dream of homeownership, and really fight against the uh, foreclosures going on in the city. I work with Maple, uh, Massachusetts Alliance Against Predatory Lending, right. and our city is one that is targeted. I'd love to come back with our ED and talk to you about that. But I, I think that that is, to me, the biggest challenge, because as the city becomes gentrified and rents raise, and you have people that are losing their homes due to um, practices that are unscrupulous, mm-hmm. unscrupulous, yes. those three words. <laughs> but, um, but I think it's important that we really make sure that people that have achieved that little piece of American dream, that it's protected. Well, Dana, we really appreciate you stopping by. You know, we've always enjoyed speaking with you. You have such a, you have a great personality, I just want to say. I think it might be from like, you know, you went to New York. I thought you went to California. I thought you went home. I lived in L.A. I thought you went to But Ho- I didn't do film Did there. you go Hollywood on us at one point? No, <laughs> no I worked. Huh? I did. I was a media liaison <laughs> ah, for a company that did concerts. Oh, but okay. they were conscious concerts, oh, so wow. like most staff. So you got the backstage passes like and all that stuff? Um, Big well, time, right? Yeah, well, yeah, I was back there working. It wasn't like I was yeah, yeah, right. chilling. Well, you're going to come back again, right? I would love that. All right, we'll have you back. Always uh, love down visiting you. You thank always you so have the sharpest jackets. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, this is this this was purposely for New Bedford guide. I <laughs> oh, this cool. Thing. Yeah, this is my New Bedford. Guide. I'm gonna have to step up my game. <laughs> hey, what do you think of that Mason? Huh? Pretty good, huh? Hmm? Oh my Mason, god, awesome? I'm a fan. Yeah, I know. Me too. I'm a, and he is so he like channels Usher. He's like the new Usher. Be my I'm baby, old enough be to, my to, baby, to remember to Usher. And he's, I was like, <laughs> yeah, when right, he said right. that, I was like, you are a better than Usher. Yeah, he is fantastic. Hey, yeah. thanks very much, Dana. Great to see you. Thank you. All right, Dana Ribeiro, Ward 4 City Councilor, outgoing. And she uh, chips in tonight here with her thoughts on the races all coming up this year. And by the way, Ward 4 wide open. So we'll see who's going to be in there instead of Dana this year.